art journal page. Okay, this one is in my Prima art journal, which is just craft paper. So I sprayed it down with water, and I'm using Distress and Cree inkers. And the green, I think, was Shabby Shutters, and then the grayish, the darker color was Weathered Wood. And um, so I left drying footage here so you can see how the colors move and everything while you're uh, working with your heat gun. They they all kind of shift and and drip and it also depends on how you're holding the paper and um, like that big splotch it'll dry really dark if you leave it like that so then I just go back in dip it back into the colors and um, essentially you're layering these colors on top of each other so and I did it I think a total of three times I think this is the last time and as you can see that water dries pretty quickly into that the craft paper. The craft paper has not been gessoed. There's no no other surface treatment. It's just paper. So I think I tapped off some of the the excess. The edges tend to be kind of dark because the or light depending on which side it is because the color either pools or the water pools. So this uh, paper towel I used to wipe up. I all the colors I did not waste. I hung it up to dry and then I made a uh, paper towel flower for my wife. So yeah, I don't I don't waste. So um, this I just splattered with water and now I'm drying it so you can see how the, the splatters dry. So that was that. This is just some book text and I'm using Mod Podge and a card and Jenny Belly just put up a video about how to get perfect collage uh, flat every time so I thought okay well I'll give it a shot because I know that I know that you're supposed to glue your substrate you're supposed to glue the back of whatever it is you're gluing and then eventually the front I did not know that you were supposed to squeegee out most of that glue. That would make sense because it would make it flatter. So anyway, so I did that and it worked. Here I am gluing multiple pieces of these art journal pages together. The reason I'm doing this, and I'm just using a Lean's glue, I'm going in, going right around the edges and then in the middle. The reason I'm doing this is because my art journal is getting so thick if you've seen my art journal flip from August, um, it's it's already really thick, and there's a whole bunch of pages that haven't been made. So if I keep going at the rate I'm going, there's no way it's going to be anywhere near closing. So and, and I'm okay with it kind of splaying open, but yeah, I have to do something to try to prevent it from you know not closing at all. So. I thought what better way than to make something thick than to make something thick. So that's what I'm doing. I'm gluing a whole bunch of these pages together and you'll see what I'm doing with them in just a second. I sped this up to like 10 times the speed. This took forever. And uh, just so you know, before I glued them all together, I used my Tim Holtz Distressor, that little guy right there with the little white thing with the red dot and I just went around all the edges and frayed the edges up. Um, you can do the same thing with an X-Acto knife if you have it, just be careful. The edges of scissors, um, so you don't have to have that tool. That tool just makes it a little bit safer. And look, I wrote my name. <laughs> so, um, I'm using that tool again just to fray the edges of the this is going to be the top page and then I wadded it into a ball and then took my pumice stone distress ink went over all the edges just to darken this page up even a little bit more and then using my fingers I kind of feathered the ink out so it wasn't so harsh I didn't want to use water because it was all distress ink it would all react and move so that's why I just used my fingers and feathered it now I am ironing it back flat and not back fat, back flat. I do have back fat, but I'm talking about back, you know, anyway. So um, I always iron the back side because I think when you iron the front side, it somehow chemically reacts with the distress ink and um, it makes it 
it changes the color, it lightens it, and so I always iron the back. So I'm doing this gluing process one more time. I'm gluing the front page to the entire board, and then I set it underneath something really heavy and let it dry for a couple days. And this, I, um, I'm adding another piece of text because I, I knew I wanted to do something in the kind of bottom right hand corner of this page. So I was like, well, I'm not sure how far over I'm going to need to go. So I just added another piece of book text. And I'm glad I did. So again, just kind of squeegeeing out a lot of that excess glue. And let's see. Okay, so this is one of the longest parts. This took me forever. So what I am doing is I am cutting essentially a window out of this block of 15 pages of paper, I think. Let me see if I can count them for you. There's a lot. And that's my, my morning beverage right there. I was having a cup of tea. I felt very British and fancy. Let's see. So I'm still cutting. And I didn't measure to make sure it was a perfect square or rectangle or anything. I just used my ruler to make sure it was relatively straight and then just went to town with my X-Acto knife. My hand got so tired doing this. So yeah, it it literally took about 20 minutes to do. This is sped up at almost 10 times the normal speed of how I actually did it. So, as you can see, I had to stop and take a break because I was like, ugh. So let's see, there's one, two, three, six, seven, eight. There's at least 12, 12 pages all glued together. So I'm having to cut through all of that. And, was not easy, but as I could, as I started getting through to the back, I flipped the entire thing over and um, started cutting through the back as well. I wasn't too worried about a perfect cut because this whole thing has a frayed and vintage look to it anyway, so that's why I wasn't too worried about it. So then I took the edge of my X-Acto knife and I just started fraying the inside edges of this window. And the inspiration for doing this was, well, A, I used to make shaker cards as when I was a card maker. And um, I was like, oh, let's, let's make a shaker card page. So um, we've done this in our scrapbook pages. And um, obviously, it's a little bit easier when you're working on some kind of media like that. But, uh, yeah. Um, I am stamping right now in hydrangea archival ink. It's this really pretty dusky purple. Uh, I didn't get a good stamp so I tried using a baby wipe to smudge it so then it kind of turned into a shadow so I was like okay well I'll stamp in black and then the hydrangea will just kind of look like a shadow behind it. So so there you go. And I'm fixing the parts that did not get stamped well with a pigment pen. I'm mixing green and metallic cobalt blue to make this pretty teal. Well, it's more green. I wanted it to go with the top color, so. And then I just spread it on with a palette knife and then used a baby wipe. And then I'm going to wipe away some of the excess with the baby wipe just to create some variation in colors. So another uh, one of my inspirations for this card was uh, Finnevere, or she goes by Anna Dabrowska on um, YouTube, and I'm just using a couple lids just to make circles. Uh, she did an art journal page, one of the only ones on her channel, I think, and it was yellow, and I think it was for Prima, and uh, it, it's a really pretty page. And this is NICAD I started. I just spread the whole thing with the paint and then used a stylus to carve into the paint and write a message, so I don't know what I'll do with that, but there you go. And uh, so she was art journaling in an old book, and she kind of burrowed through a couple of pages and sunk a picture down into it. And I was, I've been thinking about that page for a couple months now, and I was like, oh, now would be a good time to do it, now that I have to 
use up some of these art journal pages. So this is the hydrangea again with a makeup sponge. And I'm just going here and there just to create some variation, just to pull some of that kind of weathered wood color. Because that weather wood, it's gray, but it's got like a bluish undertone. And the hydrangea's got like a bluish tone to it. Um, in my preview window, what I, what I can see, it's small and grainy, so it's hard to tell. You guys will get the full HD effect, but it looks purple there. It's not purple. Well, it is purple, but it's not as purple as it looks. So then I went in with sepia just to, to grunge it up a bit, pull some of that craft color through from the top. And let's see what's next. I think up next is making the shaker. So this page took a lot of planning because I had to think which pages to glue down, which pages not to glue down, how to glue them down, which is not my normal style. Normally I just wing it, but I thought this page came out good. So, so I glued two sides using hot glue and then another two sides using hot glue. And then for the rest of the back page, I filled it in with Aline's. Um, because essentially it's just glued around the window right now. So, as you can see, I'm lifting up the edges and just gluing the the edges with the alines. And that alines is no joke. It turned that those pages into almost like a chipboard. I mean, this page is sturdy. The little block that I cut out, I tried bending it, and I was like, okay, yeah, that's not happening. So I filled the the window with microbeads, and I didn't want to cover the butterfly. Um, the the trick with shaker cards is you need less than you think. So um, I poured some back in, and this is a piece of acetate, just regular old acetate that I got from, you know, Home Depot or Office Max, not Home Depot, Office Max. Um, and so I poured the beads back in, and these were by Pennywise Art, I think. They're an online company. They have tons of different colors of micro beads. Uh, my friend got them way, way back in the day, and uh, before Michaels carried micro beads, and uh, they had tons of different colors and sizes, and so I'm using sepia accents as a glue to glue the acetate down. Normally I would use something like score tape um, because it's so sturdy, but because this this top page is still really funky from having been, you know, crumpled and then gotten wet and ironed and I didn't want to trust score tape, so I used CP accent. So as you can see I put a layer of uh or I put the box on top. I put a p paper towel down first so that way nothing got glued to it except for the paper towel because I could spray the paper towel away. So, yeah. So then I traced out that block that I'd cut out and then I cut inside the lines so that way there was, um, it wouldn't go right to the edge, it would come a little bit to the inside to cover up all of my my edges of the acetate. And now I'm fraying this paper. I don't know who makes this paper. Let me see if Oh, I still have it on my desk. It's a French script, and it's by Canvas Corp. Oh, it's 2011. This is some old paper. Because paper has a relatively short shelf life, so... This is really only three years old, but... You might still be able to find it. But it, I, I thought it was pretty. A friend of mine gave me a whole bunch of paper, and um, this was one of them, so... And now I'm using score tape to adhere this to the acetate. I didn't want to use CP accents to glue this because with going on from the paper to the acetate, I feared it would seep out. So that's why I used the score tape here. And I did ink the edges with... Of course, I didn't think about this until I re removed the backer, of course because that's me. I ink the edges with Pine Needles Distress Ink, which is a pretty T 
peel. It's not as green as it looks. It looks more like a uh, forest green, but it's not. It's a it's like this really pretty teal color. It's not as pretty as um, peacock feathers, but it's it's really pretty. Th those two work really well together. But the label would lead you to think it's some really dark, like hunter green, and it's it's not. So I just ink the edges really lightly. I didn't want it to, to completely blend in, but I did want to give it some definition. So this part, I'm sorry, you really can't see. I had this little piece of paper, and I'm coloring it up with some of the pine needles, some pumice stone, and I think another color. Um and it it was just a little scrap I got from from the same friend who gave me the craft paper and it was a quote by Emily Dickinson and it says I have to open my drawer to read it Let's see it says the possible slow fuse is lit by the imagination so I thought it was cool because um you know it's all about you know what you can do and and uh, you have to realize that sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it'll take a while for your uh, what what you see in your head to to become reality. So I thought it was fitting. So I took this piece of ribbon and I inked it up using the pine needles and I think walnut stain. Then I crumpled it up and put it into a paper towel to soak up some of the extra and then dried it and I just made it a little darker but it was gray at first so I figured that would pull the weathered wood color and let's see this page is nearly done so I really like how it came out uh, right now I'm tying it into a bow just a real simple bow. I do like the bunny ears and then wrap the bunny ears around each other and then pull tight and then pull the tails and then pull tight. And that usually gets me a really good bow. And then as you can see I cut little like fish tail notches into the end. That little flower also came from my friend. It was it's a Tim Holtz dye. It's not the tattered florals. It's I think it's the tattered floral strip, the long skinny one. And then, because this was talking about, uh, it said lit, um, I was like, oh, let's let's put a light bulb, because I have one of those little Tim Holtz light bulbs. Sure, why not? So I used Fabri-Tac on the metal part to glue it to the uh, bow, and then uh, some hot glue to, to glue the glass to the flower, again, to set it, and then the, <laughs> set it and forget it. Um, it, the hot glue sets it immediately, and then the uh, Fabri-Tac will hold it forever and ever and always. So, as you can see, I was sh shaking the card for you. Now, because these these pages, for some reason, had different placements on holes, I don't know if it's just because of my imperf imperfect way of gluing everything down, but I had to bore, bore the holes a little bit bigger, so I did that with my scissors. And now Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Pumice Stone again around the edges, just um, darken up a little bit. I didn't want to c completely cover the craft color. I just wanted to darken it up a bit. So as you can see, it's not getting really, really dark. I'm not taking it straight from the the pad. So sorry about the glare, but with acetate, it's almost inevitable. So that's the finished page. So I now have a shaker page in my in my art journal so that's pretty awesome and um, <laughs> it's at least half an inch thick yeah it's about half an inch thick it's so thick you could totally make the mini book front and back cover using this method though with the aliens so I hope you like this page and uh, feel free to subscribe like and check me out on Facebook uh, Imperfect Impulses with Aaron I'll talk to y'all soon bye